Hi guys, got a HP laptop here, uh, somebody brought me in. Uh, this is a guy who does, uh, again, like software type repair work and there's that sort of thing. Um, um, <clears throat> he says that um, basically with this, um, the customer's got a cat. <laughs> and as soon as he said that, I thought, okay, so where's this going then? So the customer's got a cat and the cat knocked over a vase with some flowers and she didn't realize for about three days apparently the water's dripping into the laptop <laughs> so uh, either the customer or the guy who's brought this in has tried it since then and says it doesn't power on um, he brought the power pack with it um, and I've tried the, not on this laptop but I've plugged the power pack in not with, not with a load, but just with the test meter. And there is 19 volts coming out of the power pack, so it's probably good. Um, so what we know is this is had water in it for some days, and somebody's then, assumedly after it had sort of dried out, has plugged it in. Yeah. So I'd, I'd, I'd said to him, I said, look, I'm not going to... Uh, even try this I'm going to open it up first and see what the situation is um, it looks a bit of a tough one to actually open uh, no there's screws in the back of it so I'll uh, get this opened up and then uh, let's have a look to see what we find inside it yeah okay so I've managed to get the the back cover off yeah um, the only thing I can really see is corrosion here on the hard drive like right? maybe so, I mean this this is kind of like underneath underneath this, this area, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't see anything from this side of the keyboard, to be honest. But I can see it here. And everything else, I mean, visibly, doesn't look bad at all. You can see, looking around it, it's looking okay from this side. Obviously, I need to get this motherboard out and have a look from the other side as well. Uh, but it would appear that maybe it's just Maybe the liquid's gone to the bottom of the case and this has been kind of like sitting in it for a while, yeah, and this is why this is corroding. Maybe this was against the bottom, so the water was kind of like below the circuit board. Well, obviously when it's, when it's, when it's the other way up, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, we'll have to get further apart and let's have a look to see if we can see any other problems with it. Okay, so I've got the uh, motherboard out and um, this side looks okay. I mean, we could see this anyway before we took it out, yeah. Apart from you know the corrosion on the hard drive that was sitting here, um, but the other side isn't quite so good. I mean, all this is okay, but there's obviously a problem here. Yeah, so um, let's get us under the microscope and have a look to see what we're facing here with this one. So we can quite clearly see uh, where the problem is. Yeah, I mean, it looks a little bit messy on this side, but this this is the real problem. Yeah. Uh, that looks a bit nasty. I think the first thing we have to do with this one is to get some isopropyl alcohol and clear all this up. Yeah, and that, then have a look to see what we've got. I mean, I don't know if that's. It's, I think it's just actually rotted the end off the capacitor rather than fried. Yeah. Uh, so let's get all this off here and let's hope the legs are still on this super IO. Uh, but I suspect we found the reason why this doesn't power up. So I'll clean it up and then let's see what we can do. Okay, that's quite a bit cleaner now. Um, so it looks like the leg is still there on the Super I.O. I was a bit worried that might have just like rotted all the way through it, yeah. Um, as you understand, the, the last bit of the story is with this is that like, after the water had spilt in for three days, it was left on side for a long time, like over a month or two, yeah before somebody tried it. Uh, I'll just check this, but I'll use the microscope to make it easier. You'll hear it uh, bleep on the on the meter, yeah. just want to make sure that I've got a good connection here, which I'm pretty sure I have. So that's from here to the actual chip. I'll scrape a bit of the crap off it, yeah. We're in a little blip. Yeah, I've got continuity, that's okay. 
this end cap has come off this capacitor um, this is either going to be the input or the output capacitor this is pretty much like a, I'm sure it's a regulator uh, I don't see the coil maybe it's on the other side uh, it looks like a book regulator or it could be a um, linear regulator yeah there, there's the coil I see the coil on the other side of the board yeah it's, it's there that's that's the coil so this is obviously a book regulator and uh, this is going to be the input or output capacitor and I've no idea what value that is uh, but I think I should just stick like a 10 microfarad on there and kind of hope for the best yeah and then I'll after that I think I'll power this up and see if it actually runs or not okay I'll get that capacitor changed and then let's see if we can you know I'll check the shorts as well on, on these capacitors but if there's no shorts we'll just power it up and we'll try it okay the replacements on there a little bit messy but the board was a bit corroded to be honest and it wasn't so easy to stick uh, this one end of it down yeah here but anyway if we can check now you'll hear this bleep um well i know you can't see it, but you'll hear the bleep i'm on continuity mode so from this end of the uh, capacitor let me use the microscope it's much easier for me okay so from uh, this end of the capacitor goes to ground yeah if i get onto here and that that's ground yeah as is the same end you basically on the other one yeah the ground this end there's no there's no short on the capacitor yeah and and this end of it goes to this chip as you'd expect it to yeah there so i've got a good connection and then the other one obviously this was okay goes in here so the capacitor's soldered in, even though I agree it doesn't look like the best uh, soldering job, but it, it, is, it is connected from the capacitor to the chip, and it's not short, it's connecting to ground, yeah? There. Uh, okay. Here. To ground, same as that one. Okay. So, uh, I think we'll just go ahead now and power this up, and let's see if it actually wants to work now. Okay, so I've cleaned that up. Um, so we'll, let's, we'll try and power this up now. So I've got the power on. Um, and let's see if this actually wants to work. Um, I'll just check I've got power coming in. Um, this little row of MOSFETs here will no doubt be where the power comes in. So, um, yeah, 19 volts. I've got 19 volts. Just pressing the start buttons here nothing's happening um how far is this 19 volts going it's coming through the first mosfet looks like there's another one here let's just zoom down a little bit so you can still see the meter hopefully yeah and you can see a little bit closer where we are okay there so there's like there's like a little line of mosfets here where the power comes in uh, so we've got 19 volts coming out the first one and then this is the second one 19 there this comes out here in fact it goes to this resistor about which of it yes i've got 19 here through the resistor 19 here 19 going to this one what's coming up here ah oh, three i'm on this resistor three i wonder if there's a book regulator let's just uh turn this over and have a look on the other side to see if we've got a coil yeah here so i'd say that's that's a book regulator it's probably like a standby so in fact when you get 19 coming in you've got three on this like permanently yeah is it this one this one probably just, yeah there just wiring away the meter it's got the meter in there so yeah we've got like a three volt supply on this one here uh, I'm assuming that kind of powers up the SIO because there's no CMOS battery on this I've noticed so that seems to be like a permanent supply as long as the battery or the has got charging all the charges on here yeah, because you know, the battery's got power so there's nothing here I'm just checking the other regulators yeah there's nothing on that one there's another one here this is probably V cool down here nothing here nothing here this one might be v ram it's around there somewhere there was another small one here that might be for the ram so yes yeah, so there's nothing powering up no 
power rail's present, yeah. Even though we're pressing the, the, the on button. Um, it's a bit difficult, this on button. You can't kind of like tell if um, you've got a connection to the board from it. I had a quick look at it. It's like, it's hard to determine whether or not there's like a, all the connections are underneath it. Just, uh, yeah, so it looks like looks like all the visible connections here are just the metal can basically. So I can't actually determine whether there's is this like just all one thing. Yeah, no, oh, that's connected. Yeah, these puts all seem to be connected together. It's yeah, like it's like a. A metal thing, so it was as though the contacts were underneath it. Yeah, I can't readily tell if this, I mean, that's have three volts on. I would assume to start this thing. Yeah, um, so I'm going to see if any voltage get into the battery. That's it, that's interesting. Let's see if, um, if we put the battery, let's take the power off. Uh, let's put the battery on here because I would assume that when this is powered up even without you know pressing anything it should start charging the battery yeah we know we've got 19 volts coming in um so let's have a look at what we've got here so again i'll just find a a ground uh should do for a ground should make a ground point what have we got on here <laughs> we've got some volts on here but put it on volts you know what have we got on here 2.9 2.9 nothing 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 so it's like nothing's getting to the charger either effectively nothing's charging the battery and you would assume there's just the power on it should charge the battery yeah that <laughs> seems like a logical thing to happen uh, so okay let's uh, put this over again I, mean, I suspect the problem's down on the Super I.O. Um, I can't see the uh, crystal either. There's got to be a crystal oscillator somewhere for the real-time clock. Uh, I can't see it. Um, this Super I.O. is a KB9022Q. Uh, for me, I'm getting focused. You've actually see that, but that, that's the actual... Uh, Part number the super IO, yeah. KB90, yeah, you can see it now, 9022Q. Okay, so that's the super IO. Um, there's no data sheet. I tried to find a data sheet for this. I've had a look on uh, bad caps, and there's a similar one, but not the right one. But basically, this does run off a three volt supply. So let me have a look to see if I can see that three volts getting somewhere onto this chip. I looked at the pinout, I couldn't really see exactly where it comes, but I'm assuming this should have three volts on it all the time when there's power on the laptop. So let me have a quick look to see if I can see that. Okay, I can't see any connection from the resistor. This is where the three point the three volts is on this bug regulator. Yeah? I've got three volts here, I've got the power disconnected at the moment. And I can't see I'm on continuity mode, so you can either bleep. And I can't see any connection from the three volts to this chip. Yeah. So there's nothing there, there's no bleeps. So the three volts, I mean it doesn't connect to here. Uh, all that that seems to be there all the time once this is plugged in. Um, the only voltage I can find around this SIO at all is about half a volt, which is on one of these pins. That, oh, I'll find it for you, it's here. It's on one of the ones just in this area. Yeah, there. Three point three eight of a volt supply on one pin. 
I've been around all the capacitors, I can't find any voltage on any of them or anything around this SIO. And it seems to me that although we could say, look, we've got corroded pins on the SIO, therefore we could change it. I mean, I've cleaned these up as best I can, it's pretty clean now. And we could say, well, yeah, there's been power on this, or it's been attempted to power up while it was wet. That seems fairly obvious. But to me, this is like a chicken and egg situation. This is responsible for turning all the power supplies on. Yeah? But to do so, this must have some standby power supply to be able to turn the other power supplies on. And the only one I can find is half a volt, and that seems wrong to me. Um, but I'm not that experienced with laptops, so I'll admit right now, I'm not that experienced with laptops. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can find a schematic for this. Uh, I'm working on the basis that there's not a standby voltage getting to here enough to switch it on. Um, I'll post up on bad caps. Um, if I get a schematic, I'll uh, carry on. Um, if I can't find a schematic, I'll uh, post this up uh, and see if any of you guys have got any uh, info on this. Yeah, um, I'm going to the UK by the way this weekend, so. I won't be able to post any more videos now till early Wednesday the 10th, yeah, about oh, six days, um, okay, I, I think I might have an odd one stashed away somewhere I can publish, yeah, uh, but yeah, um, I'll try to get a schematic, if I can't get a schematic, and you'll know I haven't got a schematic because this has been posted, and I'm putting it up to you guys. Do any of you know where we can find any more information about this SIO and where it gets its standby power it needs before it can even power up? Or am I wrong? Yeah. Okay, guys, see you soon. Ciao for now.